What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today we're gonna do a little bit of work on the 55, I'm gonna say just the rear end today in this video. And here's why. Um, look, we got a lot of stuff to do, obviously. You can see I've got, um, <laughs> one, one thing I'll tell you guys is none of the stuff that is like universal or meant to fit these cars fits these cars. Uh, and as you can see from the brake lines, these are this is a brake line kit that I bought uh, back when I first bought this car because I knew we weren't going to keep the stock drum brakes. And the brake lines, while they fit pretty decent up here, like the bends work really nice, that is not anywhere close to where the master is going to be. This guy, this big long one that comes from this joint all the way back to the back, it is nowhere near the shape it's supposed to be. I don't, I don't know, guys. So we're gonna have to do some flattening and stuff, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, here's what I wanna, here's what I wanna do. Today I want to get the brackets, and I'm gonna show you those here in a second from uh, Core Three, which guys, I, look, I cannot say enough about his product. Back when I did the 52, I used all Core Three stuff to mount up the the C6 brakes to the 52. And so I knew I wanted something that like I could get off off the shelf replacement parts for. So that's why I'm choosing to go with a C6 brake setup, which I've had for a while. I've got a Z51 brake kit sitting over there. It's a used kit, but I wanted to test fit everything for a couple reasons. One, um, obviously we want to get the brake up here and make sure that we've got the clearance we want and clock the um, actual rotor or the caliper where we want it. But we need brake lines. Obviously this kit, the, the rear end when you order it does not come with brake lines. So I'd like to bend my own. I've got some um, stainless brake line over there that we're gonna try to bend our own. Uh, the, once we bend that, another thing I noticed is this does not have any keeper on it. So I'm gonna have to have uh, or tack a keeper for the brake line, the hard line, cause I wanna run hard line. I don't want, I, I do not want any soft line except from here to the rotor or to the caliper. So I want to hard line this and I want to make it look nice like I did on my on my 52. If you guys go way back in some videos, you can see that I bent my own line. I want it to kind of conform to the rear end and look nice like it was actually meant to be there. And so we're going to do that today. But before we do that, I want to get the brake in place so I see so I can see how far my line is, how far like my the the line from the caliper to the hard line. I need to know, do I need to order longer ones where I need to tack this thing? Where, and then once we get that measurement and know that stuff after we get the brake on, then we will know how far our hard line needs to go. So we're obviously gonna have to put a uh, T fitting in the hard line somewhere. We don't have anywhere to tack that on. I know that there's some brackets out there that mount it to the front, but what I may do is at the same time we're welding a keeper here, we may weld a stud right here because this is where I'm thinking this line's gonna come and so that, that's kind of what we're, our plan is today. So it may be, I, I've not done this in a while. I did it on my 52, but I didn't film it. That was back before I was kind of doing YouTube like this. And so you guys are gonna see me struggle today, but I do wanna show you what we're gonna start with, which is the kit from Core 3 Industries. Guys, like I said, if you don't know who he is, he makes a lot of big brake kits for nine inches stock. As a matter of fact, I wanna show you this because Back when I originally bought this car, I bought a kit and had him make a custom set of brackets to put a set of Corvette brakes on a stock uh, 55 rear end, which now I'm selling these because obviously we've gotten rid of the 55 rear end, but these right here were meant for that. And so that's what those are. And then you can see my used brakes down there. I'm gonna have those all repowder coated. I'm gonna buy new rotors, but I've got the old rotors just for test fitting purposes, obviously the calipers and the lines and stuff. So. Anyway, this kit comes complete with um, obviously all the bolts you need. These are gonna be for your calipers, bolting the calipers to the bracket. All of this stuff is meant for um, mounting his product to the actual housing. And he, obviously guys, it, it's gonna depend, don't just order uh, random stuff. He's really good about getting back with you. Ask him, you know, make the measurements that he has on his website, get the right kit the first time. That way you're not, you know, going back and forth. But we've got a set of spacers, We've got some brackets. Obviously these are gonna retain the axle. The nine inch does not have like C-clips, so it has to have some sort of retainer on the outside to keep the axle in place. Um, we're not gonna worry about putting the center section in today because we're, we're a long way from that. I wanna get the rear end powder coated and stuff, but 
We're gonna start here. I'm gonna show you guys kind of the process of what it takes to get those in place. And then, like I said, I, hopefully we can get some brake lines ran in this video as well. But let's get started by, uh, I've got the axle slid in there. I'm actually gonna have to take those out to put the spacers in first. So let's get started there. Now this whole spacer thing is really based on, do you have, um, is your bearing a flush fit? Mine happens to not be a flush fit and you can measure this flange measure your bearing and you can tell. So if you don't have a flush fit bearing, then you're gonna have to use that spacer. So I'm gonna go grab it and a couple of the bolts and uh, we'll see if we can slide that thing in there. This is that spacer I'm talking about. So if you get the right measurements, and I don't even know guys if we'll be able to, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. I don't think we'll be able to use the, um, Ooh, that's close. Not sure we'll be able to use the bolts in the manner that they're supposed to go. We got, we'll just, we'll just test with it like this. That spacer it's supposed to go on like that, but obviously the bolt is supposed to come in from the other way. We may have to do some trimming on the bolt. That's uh, that is a tight, tight fit. It really, it has to go this way. And it probably can without the washer on the back. Bolts that come with the core three stuff, they just don't go in. They would go in this way but that's not the way they're supposed to go. So I was looking around and actually guys, the rear end came with the flange bolts for this and they're a T-bolt. So, and they're the exact same length. So we don't have any issues using those and they're actually a little coarser thread. Uh, they come with a lock washer. So I'm gonna put the four of those in there and then we're gonna go grab our um, plate that it's actually a spacer that will pull this out and clear that bearing. And then we should be able to grab the axle and put it in. And I'm gonna be doing this on both sides. I'm only gonna show you one side though. Go ahead and put the axle up in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease here on it before I knock it in place. Now look, this isn't final assembly because we're gonna to have to press a, there's a seal, an axle seal that goes in there, which we're not gonna worry about until we get this thing powder coated. Obviously we don't wanna, um, it's gonna be cooked in an oven and just melt that. So um, let's get a little bit of grease on this and we're gonna tap it in with a rubber mallet and then we should be able to keep moving. Now you can see what this plate does. See how the bearing doesn't go flush? That's what this spacer does. Now we can go grab some other parts to this kit. And guys, man, I had a terrible time knocking that thing in there. Without the center section in, you almost have to put your hand in the middle and help align it while you're knocking it in with the rubber hammer. I used, <laughs> you can see junk pieces of wood here. I was using a block of wood to try to help, but um, ultimately ended up having to um, hold the center up and kind of center it. Because like I said, there's no, there's nothing to grab the axle on the inside. So nothing to help keep it centered, but we got it in there. Let me go grab these other brackets and let's see kind of how they're going to fit. Depending on what kit you're using here. I'm not using a backing plate or an emergency brake. He does make a kit for that. And um, I chose not to use that. Now this right here, guys, these pieces face up. So these big window pieces, and you notice these are exactly opposite. Which side these go on depend on where you want your rotor. So if you want your rotor in the front, this one would need to go on like this, putting these four holes in the front. If you want your rotor in the back, this one needs to go on this side. You can see the cutaway for the bearing. It would need to go like this. I actually think I want mine on the back is the look that I'm going for. And it, it's really, it shouldn't matter as far as the wheels concerned or anything like that. But you can see now we've got this on here and I can go ahead, this, this basically keeps the axle in place. The axle can't come out now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put washers and our lock, our, our lock washers and our bolts on here, but this piece does need to face up. The cool thing now is all we have to do is grab our bracket that holds the caliper, and I'm gonna go grab a rotor and we'll kind of 
you know, put it together. Now that we've got that, I snugged that down, these four. I didn't get crazy, but, because we're gonna be taking it back apart, but I, you know, we're test fitting here, guys. So this guy, this is what holds the caliper. So this is your bracket, really nice thick stuff. We got a washer, we got a supplied bolt, and we are going to use all four. So there's four holes in here, and we are going to use all four bolts to hold it on. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of people would skimp here and just put two. So we've got a washer on the inside, a washer on the outside, and then the supplied hardware here. And I'm gonna put all four of these in. Now I say here, get it started. A little harder to get started on the, and these are nylock it feels like, because they won't thread down any further than that. Once we do that, and I'm gonna snug those up, we can then go grab our rotor and our caliper and kind of see what our fitment's gonna be like. I'm hoping, guys, for good things. I might even bust the wheels out here just to see that we've got optimal clearance. I don't see any issue because it is a 20 inch wheel, but it never hurts to like double check your work. So let me get these snug down and uh, we'll go from there. Before we go grab that stuff, I wanted to show you guys what I'm talking about because it's kind of hard to see up there on the tripod. You got all four of them there, the four inners, really solid that is not going anywhere so now let's go grab our rotor and our caliper and see what happens next um, he does supply bolts for the caliper and so obviously guys you're gonna have to source your own now he does sell brand new corvette brakes if you guys want to go through him um, i bought mine a while back used knowing i was gonna you know have them repowder coated but yeah if you guys are looking for a one-stop solution he does offer everything you can see I got this old crusty rotor on here. And because I bought these used, they did come with the bolts, but I'm not gonna be using those. It's nice that they did, but we're just gonna take those out. You could, I, I think our brackets would probably hold them, but why not use what he gave in his kit, which we know works, right? So there is obviously guys are right and the left. I'm putting the bleeder up that would be the proper way to do it. So we need to get, I may have to grab a um, lug nut to keep this all together, maybe not. So here's what we're wanting to see. Let's start this and make sure it's gonna thread in. There we go. Seemed like it started. I mean, he supplies these so, and he knows the size that you need, so should fit. There's always an off chance that it's a little off though. Let's make sure that it's going in smoothly. Seems like it is. I really think I'm gonna have to get a lug nut. I don't think there's any way around it. Now you can see what we've got. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk to him about when I originally was hooking this up, before I got it snugged down, everything was lined up perfect. But now that I've got a couple lug nuts threaded in here, I don't know if you guys can see the gap on this side, it's rubbing a little on the inner. So we need to center this up a little now. Um, are we going to do that by taking, it would seem if I took, I can't put a spacer here to, to bring it back. So I'm going to have to see if there's an option to put a spacer possibly in the center here and pull the wheel out, or I may have to grind some off the brake bracket. I don't, I'm not real sure. I'll just have to talk to him and see, um, what the best avenue is, but this is, you know, this guys, look, this is test fitting. That's why we do this. That's why we don't have everything coated and painted and put together, but I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And then I kind of like to, the whole purpose in this, other than, you know, making sure these fit before everything's powder coated was to see where I needed to run the brake lines. So you can see, I've got a lot of brake line here so I can, um, my actual hard lines, I'm not going to have to run a lot. You can see that 
we go well underneath the frame here and that's not going to be an issue because we're not going to get that close to the frame so um yeah that's that's kind of one of the main reasons i wanted to do all this is to get an idea where you know this stuff needed to go i want to make sure that these wheels fit over these brakes i don't see why they wouldn't because they're ginormous but we're going to give it a shot which means we obviously got to take our lug nuts off Probably should have done that before I started the camera, huh? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one on and then I'll show you guys the other side all completed, put together. I'm hoping this wheel doesn't touch the frame, which I don't, I don't think it will, but it's definitely gonna be close. heavy. I mean, it's light, but I don't know if I got any lug nuts to hold this thing on. Oh, we're a long way from the frame. Long way. Ooh, that lug nut's going to be close. We're going to have to get some lug nuts. I don't have lug nuts for these yet. Sick. Oh, it's touching my it's touching my jack stand. All right, I'm gonna move it up a little bit, and then we'll take a step back and take a look at it. That looks so good. Oh man, we're gonna have to figure out the alignment on that uh, brake, but no issues as far as clearance, as you can see. Um, nothing touching. What you're hearing is the rotor rubbing. I noticed this rotor over here is really bent, which I'm gonna show you guys, but. That is going to look really, really good under this car. I gotta get some tires. But, um, so here, here's kind of ultimately what we ended up with. This side's way better, but watch this rotor. You guys see that thing? Terrible. It's definitely bent. I'm hoping it's that, not the axle. It's bad. But um, got everything bolted on over here. This side has a little better clearance, um, which it gets really close, really, really close when this thing moves. So I think, like I said, I think this rotor is really messed up. I wasn't planning on using these anyway. I just got these with the brakes in order you know, to mock things up. But I think it's looking really good, guys. So now let's move on. Since we've got that, I may just for giggles uh, put the wheel on this side too. But other than that, we can move on to the brake lines. Now that we know kind of where our brake lines need to be, uh, we're not gonna have to make very much uh, if I use a standard Corvette line. So this is the stock rubber line, which I'm glad I got with it because it gives me an idea where I need to go and put, I'm thinking maybe like right in here, somewhere where I can transition the hard line to a T that goes up to the front. Let's take a look at what we've got and uh, kind of what I'm thinking here. So we've got some line <clears throat> that I ordered and I'll list it in the description down below. Obviously it's coiled up because that's how they ship it. I've got a straightener over there I'm, I bought, I'm going to try. We'll see how that works. But <clears throat> here's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want this like right in this area. Okay, so this, already ha this still has that piece on it. I actually got another one that um, you know doesn't have all this. If I'd have known, I didn't know these this kit or this used stuff that I bought came with this, but uh, ultimately what I'm thinking is we'll replace that for this, but I'm thinking somewhere in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I may zip tie this or something to keep it in place for now, or even put a piece of tape on it, <clears throat> just to give me a reference point. Uh, but I wanna have it equal on both sides. So. However far it comes down on this side, I'm gonna measure and we're gonna do the exact same on the other side. But I wanna get it in that spot and what I'm thinking is like right in this area, like right here. Uh, if I do that, then all we're gonna to have to do is make a line that runs from here up. I'd like for it to follow the rear end and I'm thinking we're gonna put our T right here. But for now, let's just, I'm gonna take this apart 
and we're gonna just see exactly where I need to be. I've loosely got it fitted on there. This is the new bracket that I bought and it comes with a new keeper. Um, I'm obviously not gonna be using those brake lines, the rubber lines anyway, but we've got an idea of where it needs to be. And it's pretty close to the control arm here. I'm gonna just, like I said, I'm gonna measure to the uh, axle here and uh, put the exact same thing on this side. But for now, I wanna go ahead and try to start bending this line to get an idea of where we need to go. Um, so what that means is, it means I really need to straighten some of this out. So I'm gonna straighten a section of it out. All I have to do, matter of fact, let's straighten it out just a little bit like by hand. Um, but I'm gonna come up, I wanna come, like I said, on this ridge right here and come down and out, but I want a really nice bend. I want it to look nice and be hard lined. And so uh, we're gonna attempt to use this straightener I bought. It may be a total pile of junk. Um, I bought it off Amazon. It had some pretty good reviews. Um, and the reason I bought it, it's adjustable, is, and we'll go look, let's just go look at it. This is what we got, and I'll list it down below, but here's why I ultimately went with this instead of like the ones that's plastic, because if you put an end on this, so like let's say we put the threaded end on there that we're gonna have to put on to make the flare, you can't get it in those ones that are plastic. This one you could still put it in and try to straighten it with a flare on it. Uh, which comes in really handy on the lines that I already purchased. So that's why I bought what I bought. But let's uh, let's see what this thing will do as far as straightening that stuff out. We're gonna put it here in my vise. So we have a little more hold on it. And then we'll go grab our line and see if we can set it down on that. I think we're gonna have to start a little bit of it like I did by hand in order to get um, you know some of it working. I don't know what I guess maybe that's a jam nut to tighten it up. It didn't come with any instructions, so I guess we'll just learn as we go here. So I've got some of it uncoiled, but what I'm thinking is we don't want to smash it. I think we want to just go gradual. It's doing a good job of getting this bend out of it, but then what we'll do is we'll gradually cinch it down. I think. I think the complaint that people have on these guys is they go a little too much too quick. And um, that'll definitely cause you some problems. I really need this in a different spot because my, um, my wall's right there. But I'm running into the wall. Um, let me see if I can turn this thing. Or I can go a little bit further. So you can see how straight we've made it already, but let's cinch it down just a little bit more. And I'm trying to roll this thing over as we go, if that makes sense. Man, it's really smooth operating, I'll tell you that. It's not... I'm liking this. Now that we've got this section straightened out, we can kind of set it up on here and get an idea how I want to bend it. So um, I'm going to go grab, I'm just bending it by hand here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a piece and um, or grab a like a marker and we'll mark it uh, kind of where it needs to bend. And then we'll just kind of go from there. It's just going to be a guessing game, guys. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really need a welder. Especially to tap something like this on. This tape just isn't doing the job. But I'm going to go ahead and trim this. I mean, we know I'm going to mark it here to start bending up. And then this will have to probably be by hand. But we know our T is going to be somewhere in here. So I may waste a little line to do this. But it'll just be way easier for me to manage if I go ahead and do this now. Right now, the other end just bobbing all over the place. It's making me crazy, so let's cut it. And I may run it through this. Well, it's pretty straight, actually. I was gonna say I was gonna possibly run it through the straightener again, but. 
You can see what I've done, got it cut off, like I said, and then I started to put a little bit of a bend in it here where it needs to go. We're just gonna have to, it's trial and error. Trial and error here, guys. I'm gonna start to uh, bend this, and I've got, I've got this guy, I've got a couple different tools to bend it. This is one that you're supposed to use by hand. I've never had real great luck with it. Um, this is generally the one that I use. And so I also use a marker, which I haven't marked this yet, but I really need to. And then I put an end on it just to kind of see where it needs to go within that piece. You can see I've started to bend it a little bit right here. So we're gonna put a little bit of a bend in it using this tool here. And uh, we'll just kind of go from there. If we screw it up, we'll start again. I don't. I don't love this bender either. It's kind of, I don't know. It's probably fine, but been a lot of stuff bent over the years, I'm sure, with this. So I don't want to go too far. We'll do a little bit, we'll test. I'll do a little bit more and so on and so forth. Like, I, I think I'm going to get a little too picky here. We're going to take this out. Let's put some, put some stuff around. Yeah, I went a little too far with my bend. One cool thing about this product that I'm using, it's pretty pliable. So what I can do is, since I went a little too far, and my bend's a little farther up than I wanted, I can cheat it and kind of push it up. It needs to go a little further. So for the bends, when it needs to go a little further, I'm just gonna put it on here and bend it over this. Sometimes a socket works well too. Wanted to catch you guys up on a couple things we've been doing kind of off camera. Um, first of all, I took this down to my buddy and had him weld those tabs on because it just wasn't working out with trying to use tape. So those are now welded on and you can see I've got a brake line, just a dummy line here clipped on so I can get an idea of where I need to go. The other thing, obviously we did the same thing on the other side, but the other thing is I had him weld a uh, bolt on here so we could bolt our T fitting in. So now that we've got that, I've got kind of a rough cut on this guy, right? So the one that comes from here that goes up to the T. But I'm really, really excited to show you guys this because this is probably the coolest thing as far as inventions goes um, I've had in my shop in a while. So it does go in a bench vise. Um, I've got, it's kind of hard to work on the way my vise is set up, but what you do is you put your brake line in here for a double flare. You go to step one on this, swing this arm over, and then you go to step two on this and swing this arm over. You, of course, have to latch this all down and whatnot, but this is the coolest thing ever. Um, I've been out here practicing on a little piece. I thought I had it here in my hand. Let me show you. This is the flare I just did with that, and it's so nice. No slipping or any issues. Guys, it just works incredible. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're going to put a line on one side of that so this guy here, I'm gonna to try to put a line on this side, the one that's gonna go into the flare, and I've already actually got it threaded in there. But I wanna to try to put it on there, and then we'll cut this accordingly once we get that this one on. So don't forget to put your, obviously, this guy on. I need to take this off. That's the worst part about flaring is if you forget your fitting. So we'll put our fitting on. Uh, you wanna make sure you have a nice, good cut uh, mine's a pretty square cut. Of course, I dropped that, uh, but we'll get it on there and see if we can get this end flared. This is what we've got after flaring both. Um, I couldn't keep it uniform as far as the gap between this like I wanted to. So like I wanted it to have the same gap here. The reason I can't is because this is so much higher. So this gap is going to be a little bigger, but I like the way it conforms to the rear end. It looks nice, guys. It's nice and straight and it cinches up nice. So it did take a little measuring. I measured this a couple times, seeing how far that needed to go in there. So now let's see if we can knock the other side out. This tool is so nice. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm actually going to bend one side, put the flare on, and um, I'll try to take you over here and show you this process. So we've got, first of all, you want to make sure you have a nice even cut. I know I'm pointing you guys to the ground, but so we open this thing up and you can see it's got a bubble flare on one end and a double flare on the other. So we put this thing in here, make sure you have your fitting on. It's not as important now because we don't, you know, we don't have anything on the other end, but you want to line it up evenly. And I'm gonna have to put the camera down for this, but you want to line it up evenly with the end of that block. And that's what we've got there. So because of that, we have a measurement. You guys can see the, we can kind of use this as a measuring device to see how long, um, how long we need to cut this. But either way, we need to put this top piece on and then we will go to step one. Let me see if I can do that. Oh yeah. All right. And I'm just gonna try to flip this over with one hand. We flip this guy over and put this lock in place. And then we're gonna double check that we're even. And I'm not, like I said, I'm gonna have to use two hands. Let me get it even real quick. Now we've got, once you do that, we need to cinch this down, obviously. So that keeps the block from moving like it was doing. So we've got it set on position one for three sixteenths. There's a one, it says position one or um, OP one. We need to put this thing into place. I'm gonna see if I can do this by holding it with my hip. So we got it there. I like to double check it. And then we're gonna slide over to the three sixteenths, which is OP two, so operation two, I guess. It doesn't go quite as far and I do it twice and I need to cinch down my winch or my vise, I suppose. And then we should guys have a good fitting. Let's tip that up. Look at that. Why do you know, why do we use these other tools for so long? Look at that thing. Perfect. So we're going to continue on with the progress here. Hopefully we can um, get this line bent up where I need it. I'm going to put this in first and um, obviously I'm going to have to kind of bend it as I go, but let's get it in here and then we'll see where we need to trim on the back side. You can see what I've done here. Kind of put a slight bend in this. I did this by hand, uh, just real easily, a little bit at a time. I want to push this all the way in and then we're going to mark where I think I need to cut this so we can measure you can kind of measure using this as a guide. You can see how far this one, this one's pretty much threaded all the way in. Uh, so we want to kind of keep the same on this. And so guys, I'm going to mark and cut it right about here. We'll cut it off with the cutting device or the cutting tools and uh, see if we can flare this in. Do not forget to put this guy on though. So when making brake lines, you screw up. Uh, I was really excited about showing you guys how the tool worked, but here's what happened. Uh, I made this line a little too short. So in order to get, keep the bend in it, um, I ran this one in here and then I took the end off so we could kind of know, and it's really, really close, but here's the problem. When I started to tighten these up and it started drawing these in, um, it flattened this out and then you can see it put a pretty good kink in it. It would work. But I don't like the way it looks. So I'm going to redo it. But that's, you know, look, that's part of it. So this is why I like to buy. I went ahead and tightened these down. So we're good here. These are snug. I mean, you're always going to have to go back and check for leaks. But um, I think we're pretty good here. But this one here, I'm going to remake it just a little bit longer. That way we have room to play with and we're not, um, you know, drawing it up when we're tightening these things down. Now you can see what we've got here. I had to make obviously a line a little bit longer, but now when I'm pulling this up, it's not drawing this bend out. So we know it's the right size. Now that we've got the brake lines kind of where we want them, what I think I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna go ahead, I got the actual hardware for the, the kit. So remember I told you I didn't come with any of the hardware. They actually shipped that out to me. I've had it for a while, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that in place. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I couldn't get, because I didn't have the right size hardware, I couldn't get that guy in place, the pan hard rod. I want to put the actual bolts in place. And then I want to screw the end of the, like the bag mount down here. I want to put the bag mount in place. So we'll probably have to lift the frame up a little bit in order to get the bags in. But I kind of want to see what we're dealing with as far as like um, travel and whatnot, because I'm going to have to get a line. I've got this piece here. 
um, that I'm thinking is gonna go somewhere right here, but I'm gonna have to measure for a line to go from this to this. And um, anyway, so I won't show you guys that because it's just me replacing bolts. Uh, but I, what I will do is cut back in once I get it all in place so you can kind of guys you can, you can kind of see the bags mounted I'm also going to go ahead and put the brakes back on and uh, you know just kind of make sure that everything fits so now we're just playing okay so we've got obviously all the bolts in place and I probably should have showed you guys something earlier and that is that um, when you put these uppers in there's two different sleeves okay there's a smaller one smaller in diameter that goes at the top and then there's a bigger one that goes over the stud at the bottom. Okay, so that's one thing I probably should have showed you guys, but I've got them bolted in. It's just those two inner sleeves and a bolt on the top. And then there's a big washer, a, uh, another sleeve, the bottom of the bag, another sleeve, a small washer, and a nut. Okay, and it all is labeled in the bags that come with the kit. Uh, aside from that, the brakes, when I put the brakes on, they were a little close to me, so I spaced them out with the washers provided. And uh, we'll, we'll go back and look at more of that later on, but I'm just playing right now, right? So I've got all the suspension. So the weight of the rear of the suspension is setting on the rear end, okay? So what I'm going to do is we are going to see if we can get it to move up. And that is maxed out. So that's, I guess, top of ride height. And then let's set it back down. Of course, it's not, it's gonna drain off way faster when we have the, the kit hooked up. And it'll probably drain off way faster with, if it had some uh, weight on the vehicle itself, but we don't obviously have any weight. That's cool, I dig it. Let's do it again. Nice. Need a better way to let it down though. That would be interesting when we get the uh, the rest of this together. Anyway, just thought I'd play. I have probably played with this about 30 times, guys. It's just, it's uh, it's cool to see. Um, I don't know how much room, or like how far, like how much travel do these things give you? Uh, I know there's some adjustability, so you know you can move stuff around, you can move the um, where those guys mount, so maybe you can get it higher. I don't know if those are adjustable. It looks like they're coiled or, um, they have like a spanner wrench option at the bottom. I don't really know. So we'll just have to, we'll have to do some investigating, but I think I'm gonna end the video here, guys. We got accomplished what I wanted to, which was kind of getting the brakes test fitted, uh, getting everything ready, really, so I can get this thing blown apart um, and powder coat. So I wanted to obviously run the lines, get the brackets welded on, and um, we've got all that. I wanted to make sure everything fit. You guys saw the wheel earlier. And uh, so anyway, we're, we're making some progress here. So in the next video, I think what my plan is gonna be is we're gonna switch our attention to the front and we're gonna try to get maybe the front assembled. So as far as like the upper and lowers, uh, we'll try to get those assembled. We'll try to get maybe more of the brake lines ran. I would like to run that hard line all the way to the back and get that fitting hooked up. So, uh, and then make sure everything fits in the front. So we're gonna have to do quite a bit in the next video because I'm gonna have to get a new drag link. I uh, may have to take the oil pan off. I want to I want to keep everything in place so we can kind of know how stuff fits, but ultimately it's we're getting there, guys. So anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, please like always go down there and smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button. Of course, like always, ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see this thing come together.